is housing development your go-to source for housing trending information as always i am your housing diva Fleur Annie. the ability to afford a decent house is a critical aspect of human well-being housing plays a vital role in a person's standard of living and place in the society Nigeria has an estimated population of about 200 million people and this implies that urgent attention should be placed on the country's housing sector if the housing needs of the inhabitant are to be met. We have a lot lined up on the program today but first let's start with the news making rounds in the sector. I'll be back in a moment. The Africa International Housing Show, formerly Abuja International Housing Show, AIHS, continues to be an innovative hotspot for stakeholders and investors in the real estate and construction sector due to the insight it provides into current trends, possibilities and more. The annual housing expo, now in its 16th edition, slated for July 25th to 28, 2022, with over 15,000 attendees and 400 exhibitors expected at the show is a gathering of housing magnates, business owners and experts across various professionals in Africa and beyond as it anticipates participation from a wide range of stakeholders including the government, private sector and development enterprises at various market levels of housing finance and industry professionals. Festus Adebayo, coordinator of the Africa International Housing Show, noted the explicit nature of the event as it allows key players in the built environment exchange ideas and gain first-hand information on the progress made by government institutions on policies and actions as well as the future of the housing sector. The Edo State Government has given the mandate to the Ministry of Housing to bridge the housing gap in the state by providing social housing, site and services schemes yearly. Peter Osage, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry, made this known during a visit to Edo Development and Property Agency EDPA in Benin City. Osage charged the management of the EDPA to relate all necessary details to enable the Ministry to work effectively, urging the agency to create an enabling environment for private sector participation in the housing sector. He, however, solicited the agency's cooperation in volunteering data on state-owned infrastructure, activities and projects to enable the Ministry to work better. Messrs. Baron and Cabot, a United Kingdom-based property investment firm, has urged Nigerians to take advantage of incentives provided by the United Kingdom government for foreigners in the real estate sector. Mr. Mark Payson, the founder of Messrs. Baron and Cabot, noted these while speaking to journalists recently in Lagos. According to him, owning a property in the UK would also keep investments safe from narrow fluctuation against the pound sterling and other currencies as the UK is greatly considered to be one of the lowest risk investments with consistent long-term returns. Urging Nigerians to invest, he noted that investor is granted a step-by-step -step guide on sourcing the right property to purchase as this gives the investor power and confidence to ask the right questions for profitable property investment, enabling affordable mortgages for property ownership and providing legal framework for potential clients. For details of the news, visit www.africanhousingnews.com. The Real Estate Developers Association of Nigeria has reaffirmed its readiness to collaborate with the new management of the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria towards facilitating a robust mortgage system. This was made known during a cost visit to the FMBN Managing Director. Our correspondent has a report. Real Estate Developers Association of Nigeria, REDAN, has reaffirmed its position to collaborate with the new management of the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria towards ensuring a formidable mortgage system that will cater for the provision of mass housing for Nigerians. This was affirmed during a court visit of the Real Estate Developers Association of Nigeria, REDAN, led by Aliyu Wamako, the president of REDAN, 
to the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria, congratulating the FMBN MD on his appointment as Managing Director of the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria. Federal Mortgage Bank is homecoming by Raiden, and uh, we have a new set of management uh, whom we believe it is only traditional for us to be here and wish them well and also enlighten them of our activities and also seek ways of collaborating to make sure that at least the housing provision in the country is smooth. Managing Director of FMBN, Haman Madu, gave the assurance of FMBN to grant mortgage loans to contributors of the National Housing Fund scheme and to also consider rent to own to some of the applications, thereby creating mortgage culture in Nigeria with the management's commitment to Redan in availing members of the estate developers and loans to build mass housing. We discussed various issues that affect both organizations and how we can collaborate and move forward uh, towards delivery of uh, housing for Nigerians. Um, it's been a fruitful discussion and we hope the collaboration with Redan will continue under the uh, able leadership of the current president of Redan, Elijah Wamako. Strong interaction and collaboration with critical stakeholders in the housing industry who are geared towards increasing the stock of housing was, however, deliberated on by both institutions as these ties will strengthen and promote Nigeria's housing sector. When the future of construction meets today's ingenuity, the result is Fiber Cement Board, the latest high-quality green and energy-saving building material for construction of all types from New Material Nigeria Company Limited, ideal for exterior and interior wall seating system. It's weather-resistant, fire-resistant, shutter-resistant, water-resistant. Fiber Cement Board, today's light, eco-friendly building solution, New Material Nigeria Company Limited. It's located at Kuje, Abuja. Green leads the future. Cinema serves the world. Welcome back. The program is housing development. In Nigeria, the rate of migration from rural areas to urban areas has become alarming as more people drift into the urban centers. What are the causes and effects of rural urban migration? Let's hear Nigerians speak on Voices on the Street. If you look at the causes of uh, rural urban migration, and then you look at just one thing, which is what? the search for greener pastures. But if government has put in place a very formidable and, you know, a very formidable policy that would enable uh, a form of dividends of democracy, dividends of good governance into those rural areas, you find out that there will be no need to come into the urban areas to, you know, popularize the urban area. And such things usually cause for uh, population explosion in the urban area. Because if you look at it, however, geographically, the urban uh, places, the urban settlement is usually smaller in geographical size compared to the rural settlements. Migration of uh, uh, people from the rural area to the urban has actually affected uh, us in some ways. One, today you can see that things are very hard in the uh, urban area and uh, there are no people again in the rural area. Because most of everybody now has left his villages to come to Abuja in the name of seeking for a greener pasture. And it has made everything now to be, you know, scatter, uh, cost of food, cost of living, house rentage and the rest. Uh, everywhere in Abuja today now, you cannot see any uh, village. Everywhere now has been turned to uh, estate, estate, that's it. And a lot of people don't, cannot even have the money to afford in the payment of the estate. So it has actually affected uh, some of us that are in the city. Urban oral migration has really impacted us negatively because um, the people that are saddled with the responsibility of providing social amenity at the grassroots are not doing that. As such, you see a lot of rural urban migration and that has an impact, has, um, has an impact on terms of security challenges we are facing right now because if people are 
adequately employ at the grass. So I have no business coming to Abuja to look for a job for crying around. If everything is okay, I'm, I'm having my daily bread. I don't need to come to Abuja to make it in life. But because at the grass, the local government has been neglected so badly that right now we only have two tiers of government, the state and the federal government. You can see that is impacting seriously on an urban and the abilities are the urban is not commensurate with the inflows of people coming to the to the urban voices on the street there people who migrate to the cities think they'll have a better quality of life however that is not always the case cities such as abuja lagos Bodakot face lots of challenges and the people who move there do not always have a better quality of life some of the challenges they may face include poor housing conditions why some people migrate willingly to the urban areas for some an overflow of the insurgency propelled migration from battered communities in the northeast. Now let's take a visit to New Kuchingoro Camp in the FCT for internally displaced persons. The New Kuchingoro Camp is one of the refugee camps for internally displaced persons from the Boko Haram insurgency. The camp, which has existed for over eight years, is located along Games Village Estate in Kaura District, Abuja. However, the state of housing infrastructure in the place is far from impressive. The occupants in this makeshift tent are crying out for urgent intervention. This is not house, this is a tent. It's not easy to stay here. In fact, it is not our making. We are no, it's a very big challenge now, now that it is rainy season. These badges, as you are seeing, some are leaking. Our room, where rainfall is coming, all our rooms are linking. George will sit down for one place where is the water is not linking. You and your children will not sleep just until the water finish before you sleep. And you use rag rag to push the, uh, the roof. You will sleep after rainfall. You will all come out the cloth and some they have mattress. You come out outside for Son. The new Kuchingoro IDPs have found themselves between a rock and a hard place. They cannot return home yet as their communities are still threatened by insurgency. Many of them have to manage with the situation they find themselves as they only survive on goodwill of citizens and organizations. The IDP here wants government to provide a comfortable shelter for them so that they can at least get over the tension they experienced in their previous home. The situation here since 2014 at least the government need to intervene like to put the shelters once the person has a good shelter at least even the trauma the way we are passing through it will not be like this once someone reached to the place maybe to his uh, tents and he look at the tents and he reflect his mind backward where he, by then he has house he has room he has comfortable place for him to uh, be able to stay and now he's living inside the tents where the place is so hot and it's unbearable for a human being to live the look on the faces of these idps may imply that they might have been forgotten by government they were displaced from their previous community due to insecurity and where they now call home is far from being good Housing is one of the most essential basic needs for humankind. For the new Kuchingoro IDPs, urgent help is needed from government and well-meaning Nigerians on the issue of comfortable housing. We have to understand that a new life for internally displaced persons begins not when a family moves from the conflict-affected areas, but when they integrate into the new community. Life begins when you have a place to call home. There is a need for a durable housing solutions for IDPs. I'll be back in a moment.
Welcome back. The program is housing development. Last week on this program, we watched as some Nigerians narrate the ordeal they go through in acquiring certificate of occupancy. A legal practitioner, Barista Itote Damisa, will speak more on how to acquire certificate of occupancy. The meaning of CO4 is certificate of occupancy. And it's very, very difficult to get it by the average person, here, especially in the FCT. Because CO4, the process, the bureaucratic process about getting the CO4 is very difficult. CFO means certificate of occupancy. And basically what I know is just a little bit. I know that you have to go to the development authority to get that particular document. Then they will check if they have cleared the documents in their own at their own end, if it's maybe available for residents, if that's what you want to use it to do, or depending on commercial purposes, if that's what you want to use it to do. The certificate of occupancy by simple unambiguous definition is a document, it's a certificate issued to you as a landowner. Section 9 of the Land Use Act specifically you know, empowers the governor, the state governor. And of course, for the case of the FCC, the president who also has de delegated his uh, duties to the Minister of uh, Federal Capital Territory. So empowers the governor to, in his own hand, in the words of the constitution, in his own hand, issue certificate of, of occupancy. So all applications for COFO, all application goes directly to the governor and the governor cannot delegate. He signs everything, you know, because that is what the land use are to. So that is a major constraint, you know, in the, as a bottleneck, is a major bottleneck to you acquiring it. And uh, um, specifically, another issue we need to consider is the administrative bottleneck. You know, the human interference from one place to the other before it gets to the governor. Because you pick, pick a form, fill in your data, fill in your details, and bring your passport, your passport must be white background, all those things. Then people are also, you know, trooping in and out of the offices. So it's a challenge because before a move from one place to the other, from one before you know, it's almost two years. Then the, another issue under the administrative bottleneck is the financial involvement. It is expensive, you know, for you to procure your COFO. I know in procurement of COFO, it, it is measured by square meter, actually in Abuja. It's measured by square meter. So a CO4 payment, probably in a place that is into the interline, into the suburb, will be different from a place like the art of the city. So the, the financial involvement is also a constraint because people do not have money to procure this CO4. And even when they now want to pay for it, the procedure for payment it is, not, it is not simplified as you have to move from one place to the other. And before you know, for the state governor that has four years to spend in the office, he will not spend all of his time signing CFO. And maximum of eight years, he will not also spend all of those eight years signing CFO. So these are the issues that I consider as the challenges, you know, to you procuring your CFO in Nigeria. We must begin to involve, you know, um, policies, processes that actually shows that we are in a similar climb. Because in similar climbs, things are simplified for citizens. But here, the reverse is the case. You know, we make things unnecessarily cumbersome for, you know, our people. For me, we must begin to elect leaders that will uh, certainly look at those issues. Um, uh, um, uh, like the land use act. Let us begin to think how we can review, amend, or outrightly repeal and come up with a fresh land use act. Land is so important. Very important that we cannot, you know, be tolling away, you know, tolling with it. So these are the issues we must also consider. Welcome back. The program is housing development. Coming up next, 
is Brains and Hammers. One of Nigeria's leading real estate companies, Brains and Hammers, has made a mark for itself in the delivery of affordable homes in partnership with Coop East Cooperative for Shell and Hexon Mobile, international oil and gas companies in Nigeria. It was an event of joy and glamour, witnessing the commissioning of the Coop East Beach Resort by the Honorable Commissioner for Housing Lagos State, Honorable Maruf Akinderu Fatai in Lekki, Lagos State. The project, which is a mixed product of six units of three-bedroom flats, 70 units of terraces, 10 units of semi-detached, and 15 units of detached making 110 units, is set to cater for residents in different caters. Speaking at the event, Executive Director of Brains and Hammers, Ifoma Okoye, expressed delight and satisfaction with the project's completion. We spent two years seeing its completion despite seeming challenges. I would like to thank every member of Copies for joining and trusting us enough to invest in us. When this land was just a plain parcel and with no, no, not one single building here, but they trusted us enough to invest and to sow into our vision of building a befitting estate. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to uh, build a luxurious lifestyle for you here in the heart of Lagos. Um, you stood with us through our journey and we are very, very happy that we are able, uh, we are able to actualize this vision together. Thank you very, very much. Mr. Omar Osobase, the Chief Operating Officer, Brains and Hammers, related the solid-rooted determination of the company to deliver not just high quantity but quality housing units built to best global practice. Today marks a turning point in the annals of real estate development in Nigeria. This project is clearly a demonstration of what Brains and Hammers stands for. When we announced the first of its kind real estate development in Nigeria, which is a partnership with Exxon Mobil and the Coop East Cooperative. It was rooted in our determination to deliver best global practice. Despite the onslaught of COVID-19 and the very volatile economic situation of the country between 2020 till date, we have been able to deliver an amazing and a beauty of its kind in Nigeria. Martins Amos, the immediate past president of the Cool East Cooperative, expressed delight on the credibility of Brins and Hammers, who have made a mark in the city of Abuja and now spread in tentacles in the city of Lagos. We are here to commission this beautiful project, which is the Coop East Beach Resort Estate by Brains and Hammers. And you can see everybody is so excited to see the quality of work that we have here and overall wanting to set the standard in this entire area for Lagosians and Nigerians. Brains and Hammers, uh, we know them uh, reputable, number one in uh, Abuja. Now they are setting the standard, rolling their marks here in uh, Lagos. We have issues with the housing in Nigeria, um, lots of end gaps, so it's important that we get um, a reputable realtor or developer like Brains and Hammers. The 110 units of housing is Brains and Hammers' signature project in the city of Lagos. For the real estate company, they are set to change the face of Nigerians' housing sector through the construction of explicit homes.
that is it on today's episode of housing development thanks for keeping updates let's do this again same time next week until then do have a fabulous weekend and remain your housing diva flora annie